Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Middle Earth: Shadow of Mordor. Mordor. Got to roll them Rs. Uh, I'm gonna jump in because I usually have far too much preamble for my LPs. Uh, this this LP is gonna have spoilers for Lord of the Rings, so if you haven't seen it, don't watch this video yet. But then watch it later. Lore-wise, this game is supposed to take place in between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Because in the books, there's a 50-year gap between those two. I love this game, I'll be honest. It was here, on the slopes of Mount Doom, that the Dark Lord Sauron was defeated by the last alliance of men and elves. It is here that for two and a half thousand years, the Rangers of God stood watch. By the end, they were very tired. And while the strength of Gondor faded, the power of the Manus of Sauron grew in darkness. He has returned to Mordor. Shadow and flame have fallen on the Black Gate. That's obviously the Hobbit's depiction of the Eye of Sauron, which is built from the depiction uh, in the movies as well. Obviously. You know, it just occurred to me, I don't know if I know any swears in, um, like, any of the Elvish languages, or any, you know, minced oaths in, uh, Lord of the Rings. We're killing chicken. Wouldn't want to hurt you. It'll take a lot more than that. <laughs> Dear Hyle, the mighty chicken killer. Come on. Come on. Hey, let's be clear here, everyone. Uh, edge on edge is a terrible way to sword fight. You'll have to hit harder if you want to best your father. Hard enough? I do not even look at you, my son. Perhaps you should not forget to hit. Stay alert, dear Hyle. Your enemy will not always be as he appears. Yeah, I love beating my children. Easy, son. You're not a soldier yet. I'll have your gun. I, I love the design of these orcs. I'll be perfectly honest. These are awesome. Like, they, they ascend all of the designs in the movie, like, so well. My blade shall rest in your throat. Dear Hyle, remember your training. It's your end. So, I guess I should, we can just wait, you know? But let's be clear here, th this is the Batman Arkham, like, style of play, you know? Like, it even has the same control scheme where, uh, counter is Y. Because, like, for example, Spider-Man has a different style of play because you need Spidey's web shooters, you know? But this is just, like, straight up and down. Batman Arkham. That line always confused me. Go find your mother. Go find your we'll get to that later. I'll be right behind you. Go. Be 
Yeah, these are mostly in the movie timeline, but there's some stuff that is in the books that is not in the movies. Am I dead? You are banished from death. That is in these games. So they're in a really weird place in canon. But I love them. Well, I love the first one. And it's DLC. I have not actually played the second one. Who could this woman be? <laughs> I love that he holds the flowers in the same way he holds the sword. So, this is our guy. This is Talion. Uh, I do like his general design. He's just Aragorn, like, crossed with Geralt, crossed with... Like, he's, he's a mishmash of all of your favorite fantasy character mans. It always cracks me up to hear uh, Tolkien's works use halfling. <laughs> Happy anniversary, my love. Alien. This is beautiful. Where did you find it? I still have a few friends left in Gondor. Did you talk to my father? Yes, I did. And nothing has changed. He's still very stubborn. Those Gondorian dads, you know. The yeah. I will not come willingly. There must be a better life than this. Not now. But soon. I'm just so tired of hiding here, Italian. Is the side braid just the equivalent to the anime side ponytail? <laughs> I really love these animations for stealth killing, by the way. Yoink. Oh, they're so gnarly. Put the sword down, Ranger. That mace is so crazy. The Black Fire alive. Get on it. Take her. He will leave. Mostly, you know. Now, I'm sure he won't do the same thing a second time. Don't worry about it. So this isn't a spoiler because a guy already said it, but we are banished from death. So I'm not really sure how to count this because ordinarily I would write this off as just like generic fridging. Just because how many, how many like fight mans have the backstory of like, I killed my wife, or, you know, and it's like, good thing you had that wife so she could, you know, be a plot device for you. And again, here is like a counterpart to the uh, 
Eye of Sauron with white and blue instead of orange and black. What is this place? Love that. See for yourself. But yeah, the fact that Talion also, like, literally is killed in the process of his wife getting killed makes me not want to write it off as just regular fridging, you know? It is fridging, but not normal fridging. Now do you believe me, Ranger? What has happened to me? And for those who don't know, fridging is just Banished from death. the killing of just a man's, of like, woman dark. for the sake of the man's Earth character development. Us together within the walls of Arda. If what you say is true, then how do we break this curse? We find the one who cast it on us. The Black Hand of Sauron. Ron. Oh, man. <laughs> uh. All right, I'm going to turn the audio down a little bit. So yeah, we're in Lord of the Rings, guys. We're doing it. Now, either because of the timeline... Or because of uh, rights-related shenanigans. Either due to rights-related stuff or timeline shenaniganery, we will not be meeting very many characters from the main, like, canon of Lord of the Rings. And hey... Forge Towers unlocks the Wraith's memories, and they give you fast travel. You know, where th these are these are the big ass Ubisoft towers, like in Far Cry, like in Assassin's Creed. So we missed one of you at Narcos, eh? An easy mistake to fix. Oh man, I love how ugly they are. They're so ugly, they're almost cute. You know, like I could see myself having a. Uh, I could see myself having like a plush of these guys because they're so ugly that they end up being cute. You will suffer for what you've done. So Elfshot is the name for the Elf Lord's... Okay. Who he is is kind of a spoiler because he's an important character. So I don't want to say his name yet. But the Elf Lord's magical bow and arrows are referred to by Elfshot, which is something that I find is really funny. Uh, back in the day... People did not have science. Uh, and so they would write, you know, maladies and afflictions off as magic. And so an old term for arthritis is elf shot because it was believed that tiny invisible pixies were shooting you with tiny invisible arrows. And that's why you were getting like pains, you know, or pins and needles. So just generic like nerve problems or muscle problems like that. That was elf shot. Elves were shooting you, you know. The bigger one's made of fat air, though. A slave I had. Swears he fought him. I sold him for a cake of grog to give him the slaver. All right. 
They appear as shadows. These are the captains of Sauron's army. They appear as shadows because you don't yet know their identity. By interrogating them, you can uncover valuable information about the captains. This is Gimub the Slayer. You've learned his identity that's to help you hunt him down. His title, the Slaver, gives you roles about his uh, gives you clues about his role in Orc society. You've also learned his power rating. This is an indication of how difficult he will be to defeat. So this is the cool thing about this game. You get like because in Arkham there's no there's just a bunch of generic enemies and occasionally there's a boss. But in this game, anyone everyone has a name, you know? If one can trust an orc, trust has nothing to do with it. His thoughts cannot lie. Smoke and deal, Elf Lord. Pardon me, I've got a little stiff neck. Ooh, a spider. Gold icons advance the story, red is power struggles, and then white is side missions. We have two main missions. Mirian, these coins were minted by the elven slips of Egregion, Eregion, and Mirian became the currency of that realm prized throughout Middle-earth. Uh, as with the Ithildin, Star Moon, which they had marked their doors. Mirian was wrought from the Mithra, which they traded with the dwarves for. So, if you remember any of the big doors in Lord of the Rings, perhaps solved by Speak, Friend, and Enter, this, uh, I think this is what they're describing here. Uh, the currency would be calmly traded between the races to honor, at locations such as the market of Khazadum, to honor the dwarves. Mirian pieces featured Durin's door on one side and its great forge on the other. Uh, Durin's door obviously being the... Well, I, I don't know, actually. I don't know if it is obvious, but Durin's door is uh, one of the entrances into Erebor, the Lonely Mountain, which is the area they're trying to get to in the Hobbit. Uh, and because it's a dwarven settlement, naturally there's a big-ass forge inside. Uh, in the Second Age, the Dark Lord Sauron relentlessly sought, relentlessly sought the destruction of Midian, and now the coin to su supremely rare relics of a long-dead kingdom. So we can also read about Morndor, Mornin, Udun. This one's interesting. The Valley of Udun. I won't read the whole thing, but if you'd like, you can pause it now. Let me get myself out of the way here. Pause it now. All right. Um, at one point, uh, main man Gandalf refers to... It's changed. Nothing makes sense. Really? Said why I'm here, and I can't remember. <laughs> Let's go find the slaver. His mind may provide answers. Let me fix my camera here again. We got one of these guys already, huh? So that's a problem, troll. You know? If you ask me, we're not doing much of anything here at Udu. Captain should reassign us. But yeah, Udun is this valley, and at one point Gandalf, main man, refers to uh, refers to the Balrog as a flame of Udun. Uh, yeah, Udun foothills. Uh, presumably because they live in this like area, I guess. So, just like with Frodo using the ring, we can enter the Wraith world. This doesn't make us invisible, but because we have... But because we have uh, a Wraith within us, we can use it. I'm just a little baby ranger now, so I don't want to get myself into trouble here. Oh, you saw me, huh? 
Sooner or later, you'll beg me to kill you. So yeah, every orc, uh, you can like scan and find their name out. Sorry, I'm fighting in the bushes here. So yeah, they all have names, and what's more, they also all have levels. Uh, and so, in addition to everything else, they can also level up. Either by killing you, or because these are orcs we're talking about, they can actually kill their, their fellows. We got an ability point, so let's take a look at that, huh? So we can put points in a ranger and wraith. That's what I was missing. I wanted that. All right. So this is this is Arkham Combat. So of course you get the ability to charge up a combo and then turn that into attack. There we go. And of course, if you get hit, you drop the combo. You can also, uh, I think, miss an input and drop the combo. So they're not instant kills on everyone. If guys have big enough health. This is Shrock. We will meet again, and I will Shrock, that's right. Shrock is essentially like shit. You better get your ass back here, dude. So some orcs uh, will actually be afraid of... Some orcs will actually be afraid of certain things. So if you, like, poison them or light, light them on fire, they'll run away from it. This guy might be afraid of uh, just being comboed. There you go. So that was a five power captain. So yeah, some orcs will actually kill other orcs. Ratbag the coward. Oh yeah. So you can also ruin your sword. I think these are all um, like DLC ones. So, more defense versus range attacks. Flame of Anor. Uh, Flame of Anor is just the line that... Uh, Gandalf claims to be uh, a wielder of the Flame of Anor. It's unclear what he means by this. Because I think he says Arnor. And Anor is a different thing. I think Anor is the sun. Just the name for the sun. I kind of want to put this on, just because that's cool looking. We can also socket our bow. We have Deadly Archer and Ascendant. I want more focus. And we also have uh, the Dagger. Gravewalker, Orc Hunter, Hidden Blade. As, as though it wasn't clear that this is, you know, combined Assassin's Creed and, and uh, Arkham, then... Here you go. Immune to poison is useful. So yeah. I'm going to finish these guys just because I want to. Damn. Damn, that's my health, huh? There we go.
Sorry, I'm getting quiet because I'm trying to focus in hardcore on this. Okay, so yeah, you also lose the combo for dropping your combo uh, by missing an input. There I mistakenly hit counter where there was no counter option. Oh, so gnarly. God, I love, like, it's just... Like, yes, it's just Arkham Combat, but come on. Arkham Combat is good. Just you? Talk to me, baby. <laughs> Let's gain some intel, huh? So we can learn intel. Uh, we can also figure out more stuff about them. So let's see who's above Ratbag. Garoth, Karagor Tamer. Um, you guys remember that weird-ass wolf that uh, attacks Aragorn in... The two towers, I think it is. Knocks him off his horse. All that jazz. There we go. Um, Ungol. Uh, Ungol, as in Ungoliant. These are oversized spiders. The evil, intelligent children of Spider Queen Shelob. While they've, take on, while they've taken Nan-Ungul, Cinderin for Valley of the Spiders, as their primary home, they've since spread across Mordor, taking residence in its caves and other dark places, and report back to the Queen. Their nests and lairs are littered with the crushed bones of their prey. They're not afraid to make victims of encroaching orcs. The recent sterns of Mordor have emboldened the Ungul and piqued the curiosity of the Spider Queen, but to what end re remains a mystery. So, uh, Shelob, famously remembered in... Uh, the third Lord of the Rings movie, Return of the King. Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen it, but it's the one where the king returns. Um, and this is a lesser known fact, but Shelob actually has a mother. And her name is Ungoliant. Yoink. So, in addition to interrogating and shanking them, which is just a stealth kill with more steps, we can also drain them. And he's terrified of us. We will leave him alive to spread my story. I kid. Mostly because we can't do that yet. Oh, there are humans here, but they're just slaves. Uh, cause we're in Mordor, baby. It's one of the worst places to live ever. Like, Mordor sucks, dude. Hey, come here. Get my Assassin's Creed bush. Alright, where are we heading next? Let's see. I'm thinking that tower. So actually getting out of the Valley of Udun can be a problem sometimes because of all the sheer walls. But luckily, you have a pretty good climb in this game. Uh, so let's talk about Uruks. So, uh, Uruk and Orc don't actually mean different things. Goblin, Uruk, and Orc. Like, in Lord of the Rings, goblins and orcs are supposed to be the same thing. Uh, and the reason that they're not is... 
Well, the reason that the, they, those are different words. Oh, hey, guys. Like, normally in a game like this, you'd be like, they should have seen me, right? But these are orcs. They're all dumb, and their eyes don't work, and they're constantly drunk, and they're... Like, they're orcs, you know? It works. So many things work in this game, because you can just be like, well, they're orcs. You know? Of course it works like this. Tasty oips. Elgaron. I love how close I can get, and they're like... Wait, let's see where he's going with this. I love this animation. Because in Batman Arkham, you know, Batman will just do that. Gnarly. Oh, I love when their heads go flying. Anyway, so orcs and goblins. So the those weird green fellows are just called goblins, you know? Uh and the elven word for goblin is uruk. And because of stuff like... Oh, man, I missed my input somehow. Uh, because of stuff like the Rangers or the Alliances of Elves and Men, humans would just hear the word Uruk and be like, oh, that's what those things must be called if they hadn't heard the word Goblin before. But with a Westron accent, Westron is the name for the common tongue. It's the human language in Lord of the Rings. But with a Westron accent, you say Orc. You know, you don't say Uruk, you say Orc, because you need to roll the R, as you often, like, as often happens in, uh, you know, Elven words. You get a lot of R rolling in Elven words, like Mordor. You'll almost never hear anyone in the movies or in the books or actually involved say Mordor. It is almost always Mordor. You gotta roll it. You double roll every single letter as hard as you can. This turned into a really big fight, guys. See, this is the problem because, like, bands of orcs can actually team up and band together. Oh! And they can run into other guys. But yeah, that's why goblins and orcs are a different thing. The reason that they say uruks in this game is because they're trying to establish these as being like no these just are these aren't just regular orcs they want to like it's a story thing where they want to make these guys seem cooler than they are so they clarify that they're uruks because they want to evoke uruk high and uruk high just means better orc you know like it's it's a pretty open and shut thing uh you better not be going anywhere So that guy is a worm, which is a class, but they're specially cowardy. Uh, and interrogating them gets you more gusto. Oh, did you see the head rolling back there? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I'm back in. I love this game. So, let's get some upgrades then, shall we? So yeah, by doing parkour good, you can end up getting combos for your for your stuff. So let's get ride Karagors because that's useful. And because the sooner I get the ability to ride a Karagor, uh, the sooner Karagors can become less of a problem for me. So, there's not a lot of writing in Mordor, but what there is, you can be like, hey, cool. It's not the meat on the table, there's a little piece of paper down there. So, <laughs> he cannot be shot, he's very strong, and he has a group of loyal followers. 
However, Goroth, Karagor Tamer, a guy who tames Karagors, has a fear of Karagors, becomes terrified at the sight of Karagors. He's also vulnerable to Mounted Beast, can be killed instantly by Mounted Beast finishers. So if we were to get on one of the Karagors, which will assuredly be around because he tames them, we can kill him instantly. And even if we can't kill him, he's going to run away in fear because he's afraid of them. I don't remember if there's like an opinion thing in this game where like um, people will like see their captain run away and they'll be like, oh, that's lame. Um, I know that orcs can actually betray each other. So yeah, these towers actually are not here in the real world. Uh, oop. That thing is a hellhawk. So you can see over there. So hellhawks are the uh, justification for why you can't have um, eagles in Mordor. You're welcome, guys. Pipeweed. Hell yeah. So that troll's still over there. I think they have their own name in this. So you can actually see that that tower is mostly destroyed. And there, it's all good. Only in the Wraith world. Because these are the Elf Lord's memories, and we're using them to climb the tower that isn't there. It's possible that the only reason that we are forced into wraith mode for for that is uh, is because like it's physically not here and so we can climb the ghost of a tower using the ghost's memories. And presumably Talion's just like on the floor remembering this. But they want to get their big Ubisoft tower moment, you know? Based on the presence of anvils, Each the, citadel to the, light against the, shadow. the fact that these are called forge towers and the elf lord's use of a hammer, we can figure out that he is, in fact, a smith of some kind. So yeah, you can also use towers to skip time. Berad Silme. Nothing is known about these enigmatic ruins, creation, or destruction, save the haunted visions of the wraith possessing the Doom Range Italian. The towers are familiar. The eternal energy, time... The eternal enemy, time, has cloaked their purpose, obscured their forms, and made a distant memory of their creators. Until such time as their origi origins are uncovered, we can only classify these ruined monoliths as Barad Silme, Towers of Starlight. Unseen, they are shadows of Mordor's distant, violent past, reflecting memories of the lost elvish land Eregion. Eregion. All right. So let's do some main missionary. Eh? Uh, next time, though. I'll cut it here. This has been a good place to stop. I'm having so much fun doing this. I recently marathoned all of the Batman Arkham games. And what's more, I also am playing through the PS4 Spider-Man. So I've been doing a lot of this style of gameplay and a lot of combat like this. But you know what? I'm having some fucking fun. This is a good, this is a good game. I like this game. I know the canonicity is dubious at best, but I, I don't mind that. Uh, but I've been Alfred. That's short for Friedrich. Oh, I, I got this as well. Um, the first letter of my name is... This is a tattoo. This isn't marker. I have several tattoos. Um, but the first letter of my name actually is an A. It's Ash, which is this. But Ash isn't in the English language. So to clarify, I got this tattooed so people... When I'm spelling my name for people, I can be like Ash L F, And they'll be like, what? And I'll be like, this is the letter Ash. Uh, anyway, tangent. But my name's Alfred. Short for L. Friedrich. 
Uh, I love Lord of the Rings. I love this game. I'm very happy to be playing it. I hope you all are having a good time watching it. I hope you all have a good day. See you guys next time. Bye.